Preface to Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Poems by Mary Baker Eddy. Preface. The poems garnered up in this little volume were written at different periods in the life of the author, dating from her early childhood up to recent years. They were not written with a view of making a book, each poem being the spontaneous outpouring of a deeply poetic nature and called forth by some experience that claimed her attention. The Old Man of the Mountain, for instance, was written while the author was contemplating this lofty New Hampshire crag, whose rugged outlines resemble the profile of a human face inspired by the grandeur of this masterpiece of nature's handiwork and looking up through nature unto nature's god the poem began to take form in her thought and alighting from her carriage she seated herself by the roadside and began to write some tourists who were passing and who made her acquaintance asked her what she was writing and she replied by reading the poem to them they were so pleased with it that each requested a copy, which was subsequently mailed to them. Similar requests continued to reach the author for years afterward, until the poem finally found its way into print, appearing together with The Valley Cemetery in a book, Gems for You, published in Manchester, New Hampshire, in 1850, and again in Boston in 1856. The poem of the Dedication of a Temperance Hall in Lynn, Massachusetts, in 1866, was written for that occasion and was sung by the audience as a dedicatory hymn. The Liberty Bells appeared in a Lynn, Massachusetts newspaper under the date of February 3, 1865. A note from the author, which was published with the poem, read as follows. Quote, Mr. Editor, in 1835, a mob in Boston, although Boston has since been the pioneer of anti-slavery, dispersed a meeting of the Female Anti-Slavery Society and assailed the person of William Lloyd Garrison with such fury that the city authorities could protect him nowhere but in the walls of a jail. Today, by order of Governor Andrew, the bells are ringing to celebrate the passing of a resolution in Congress prohibiting slavery in the United States. End quote. All of the author's best known hymns are included in this collection, as well as many poems written in girlhood and during the years she resided in Lynn, Massachusetts, and which appeared in various publications of that day. Among her earliest poems are Upward, Resolutions for the Day, Autumn, written in a maple grove, Alphabet and Bayonet, and The Country Seat, written while visiting a family friend in the beautiful suburbs of Boston. Yet even these are characterized by the same lofty trend of thought that reached its fullness in her later productions. In May 1910, Mrs. Eddy requested her publisher to prepare a few bound volumes of her poems, for private distribution. When this became known to her friends, they urged her to allow a popular edition to be issued, to which she assented. With grateful acknowledgment, therefore, of this permission, this little volume is presented to the public in the hope that these gems of purest thought from this spiritually minded author will prove a joy to the heavy laden and a balm to the weary heart. Adam H. Dickey, Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, September 24th, 1910. End of Preface Recording by Tavarish Old Man of the Mountain by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish Gigantic sire, unfallen still thy crest, Primeval dweller, where the wild winds rest. 
beyond the ken of mortal e'er to tell what power sustains thee in thy rock-bound cell or if when first creation vast began and far the universal fiat ran let there be light from chaos dark set free ye rose a monument of deity proud from yon cloud-crowned height to look henceforth on insignificance that peoples earth recalling oft the bitter draught which turns the mind to meditate on what it learns stern passionless no soul those looks betray though kindred rocks to sport at mortal clay much as the chisel of the sculptor's art plays round the head but comes not to the heart ah who can fathom thee ambitious man like a trained falcon in the gallic van guided and led can never reach to thee with all the strength of weakness vanity great as thou art and paralleled by none admired by all still art thou drear and lone the moon looks down upon thy exiled height the stars so called so glitteringly bright on wings of morning gladly flit away yield to the sun's more genial mighty ray the white waves kiss the murmuring rill but thy deep silence is unbroken still End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Constancy by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley When starlight blends with morning's hue I miss thee as the flower, the dew When noonday's lengthening shadows flee I think of thee, I think of thee. With evening memories reappear, I watch thy chair, I wish thee here, Till sleep sets drooping fancy free, To dream of thee, to dream of thee. Since first we met, in weal or woe, It hath been thus, and must be so, Till bursting bonds, our spirits part, and love divine doth fill my heart. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mother's Evening Prayer by Mary Baker Eddy. Read for LibriVox.org by phone. O gentle presence, peace and joy and power, O life divine that owns each waiting hour, Thou love that guards the nestling's faltering flight, Keep thou, my child, an upward wing tonight. Love is our refuge, only with mine eye Can I behold the snare, the pit, the fall. His habitation high is here and nigh, His arm encircles me and mine and all. O oh, make me glad for every scalding tear, For hope deferred, ingratitude, disdain. Wait and love more for every hate and fear, No ill, since God is good and loss is gain. Beneath the shadow of his mighty wing, In that sweet secret of the narrow way, Seeking and finding what the angels sing, Lo, I am with you alway, Watch him pray. No snare, no fowler, pestilence or pain. No night drops down upon the troubled breast. When heaven's after smile, earth's teardrops gain. A mother finds her home and heavenly rest. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Love by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Brood o'er us with thy sheltering wing, Neath which our spirits blend, Like brother birds that soar and sing, And on the same branch bend. The arrow that doth wound the dove Darts not from those who watch and love. If thou the bending reed wouldst break, By thought or word unkind, Pray that his spirit you partake, Who loved and healed mankind. Seek holy thoughts and heavenly strain, That make men one in love remain. Learn too that wisdom's rod is given, For faith to kiss and know, that greetings glorious from high heaven, whence joys supernal flow, come from that love divinely near, which chastens pride and earth-born fear, through God who gave that word of might, which swelled creation's lay, let there be light, and there was light, what chased the clouds away, t'was love whose finger traced aloud, a bow of promise on the cloud thou to whose power our hope we give free us from human strife fed by thy love divine we give for love alone is life and life most sweet as heart to heart speaks kindly when we meet and part end of poem this recording is in the public domain I'm Sitting Alone by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley I'm sitting alone where the shadows fall In sombre groups at the vesper call Where tear-dews of night seek the loving rose Her bosom to fill with mortal woes I'm waiting alone for the bridal hour of nymph and naiad from woodland bower, Till vestal pearls that on leaflets lay, Ravished with beauty the eye of day. I'm watching alone o'er the starlit glow, O'er the silvery moon and ocean flow, And sketching in light the heaven of my youth, Its starry hopes and its waves of truth. I'm dreaming alone of its changeful sky, What rainbows of rapture floated by, Of a mother's love that no words could speak, When parting the ringlets to kiss my cheek. I'm thinking alone of a fair young bride, The light of a home of love and pride, How the glance of her husband's watchful eye Turned to his star of idolatry. I'm picturing alone a glad young face, Upturned to his mother's in playful grace, And the unsealed fountains of grief and joy That gushed at the birth of that beautiful boy. I'm weeping alone that the vision is fled, The leaves all faded, the fruitage shed, And wishing this earth more gifts from above, Our reason made right, and hearts or love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The United States to Great Britain by Mary Baker Eddy. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley. Hail, brother, fling thy banner to the billows and the breeze. We proffer thee warm welcome with our hand, though not our knees. Lord of the main and manor, thy palm in ancient day, Tis rock the country's cradle that wakes thy laureate's lay. The hoar fight is forgotten, our eagle like the dove, Returns to bless a bridal, be token from above. List, brother, angels whisper, to Judas' sceptred race, 
thou of the self same spirit allied by nation's grace was cheer the hosts of heaven for anglo israel low is marching under orders his hand averts the blow brave britain blessed america unite your battle plan victorious all who live it the love for god and man brave britain blessed america unite your battle plan victorious all who live it the love for god and man end of poem this recording is in the public domain Christ My Refuge by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley O'er waiting harp strings of the mind There sweeps a strain Low, sad and sweet whose measures bind The power of pain And wake a white-winged angel throng Of thoughts illumined by faith and breathed in raptured song with love perfumed then his unveiled sweet mercies show life's burdens light i kiss the cross and wake to know a world more bright and o'er earth's troubled angry sea i see christ walk and come to me and tenderly divinely talk thus truth in grounds me on the rock upon life's shore gainst which the winds and waves can shock oh nevermore from tired joy and grief afar and nearer thee father where thine own children are i love to be my prayer some daily good to do to thine for thee an offering pure of love whereto god leadeth me end of poem this recording is in the public domain feed my sheep by mary baker eddy read for LibriVox .org by alan lawley Shepherd, show me how to go o'er the hillside steep, how to gather, how to sow, how to feed thy sheep. I will listen for thy voice, lest my footsteps stray. I will follow and rejoice all the rugged way. Thou wilt bind the stubborn will, wound the callous breast, make self righteousness be still, break earth's stupid rest. Strangers on a barren shore, laboring long and lone, we would enter by the door, and thou knowest thine own. So when day grows dark and cold, tear or triumph harms, lend thy lambkins to the fold, take them in thine arms, feed the hungry, heal the heart, till the morning's beam, white as wool ere thy depart, Shepherd, wash them clean. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Valley Cemetery by Mary Baker Eddy. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley. Ye soft sighing zephyrs through foliage and vine, Ye echoing moans from the footsteps of time, Break not on the silence unless thou canst bear A message from heaven, no partings are there. Here gloom hath enchantment in beauty's array, And whispering voices are calling away, Their wooings are soft as the vision more vain, I would live in their empire, or die in their chain. Here smileth the blossom, and sunshine not dead, 
flowers fresh as the pang in the bosom that bled yes constance has love that outliveth the grave and time cannot quench in oblivion's wave and thou gentle suppress in evergreen tears art constant and hopeful though winter appears my heart hath thy verdure it blossoms above like thee it endureth and liveth in love ambition come hither these vaults will unfold the sequel of power of glory or gold then rush into life and roll on with its tide and bustle and toil for its pomp and its pride the tired wings flitting through far crimson glow which steepeth the trees when the day god is low the voice of the night bird must here send a thrill to the heart of the leaves when the winds are all still mid graves do i hear the glad voices that swell and call to my spirit with seraphs to dwell they come with a breath from the verdant springtime and waken my joy as in earliest prime blessed beings departed ye echoes at dawn o tell of their radiant home in its morn then i'll think of its glory and rest till i see my loved ones in glory still waiting for me end of poem this recording is in the public domain upward by mary baker eddy read for LibriVox.org by alan lawley i've watched in the azure the eagle's proud wing his soaring majestic and feathersome fling careening in liberty higher and higher like genius unfolding a quenchless desire would a tear dim his eye or pinion lose power to gaze on the lark in her emerald bower when higher he soareth to compass his rest what vision so bright as the dream in his breast god's eye is upon him he penciled his path whose omniscient notice the frail fledgling hath though lightnings be lurid and earthquakes may shock he rides on the whirlwind or rests on the rock my course like the eagles oh still be it high celestial the breezes that waft o'er its sky god's eye is upon me i am not alone when onward and upward and heavenward born end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Oak on the Mountain Summit by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley O mountain monarch at whose feet I stand, Clouds do adorn thy brow, skies clasp thy hand, Nature divine in harmony profound, With peaceful presence hath begirt thee round and thou majestic oak from yon high place guardest thou the earth asleep in night's embrace and from thy lofty summit pouring down thy sheltering shade her noonday glories crowned whatever thy mission mountain sentinel to my lone heart thou art a power and spell a lesson grave of life that teacheth me to love the hebrew figure of a tree faithful and patient be my life as thine as strong to wrestle with the storms of time as deeply rooted in a soil of love as grandly rising to the heavens above end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Woman's Rights by Mary Baker Eddy, read for LibraryVox.org by Gowry Ladon. Grave on her monumental pile, she won from vice by virtue's smile. Her dazzling crown, her scepter throne, affection's wreath, a happy home. The right to worship, deep and pure, to bless the orphan, feed the poor. Last at the cross, to mourn her Lord, first at the tomb, to hear his word. To fold an angel's wings below, and hover o'er the couch of woe, to nurse the Bethlehem babe so sweet, the right to sit at Jesus' feet, to form the bud for bursting bloom, the hoary head with joy to crown, in short, the right to work and pray, to point to heaven and lead the way. Lynn, Massachusetts, May 6, 1876. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The New Century by Mary Baker. Read for LibriVox.org by April 6090, California, United States of America. The New Century. The God crowned patient century, thine hour hath come. Eternity draws nigh, and beckoning from above, one hundred years aflame with love, again shall bid old earth goodbye. And lo, the light, far heaven is nigh, new themes, seraphic, life divine, and bliss that wipes the tears of time away will enter, when they may, and bask in one eternal day. Tis writ on earth, on leaf and flower, love hath one race, one realm, one power. Dear God, how great, how good thou art, to heal humanity's sore heart, to probe the wound, then pour the balm, a life perfected, strong and calm. The dark domain of pain and sin surrenders, love doth enter in, and peace is won, and lost is vice, right reigns, and blood was not its price. Pleasant View, Concord, New Hampshire, January 1901. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To My Absent Brother by Mary Baker Eddy. Read for LibriVox by Clatu at mixedsignals.ml slash cnc. Dwells there a shadow on thy brow, a look that years impart. Does there a thought of vanished hours come ever o'er thy heart, or give those earnest eyes yet back an image of the soul, mirrored in truth, in light and joy, above the world's control? So may their gaze be ever fraught with utterance deep and strong, yielding a holy strength to right, a stern rebuke to wrong. Thy soul, upborne on wisdom's wings, in brighter morn will find Life hath a higher recompense than just to please mankind. Supreme and omnipresent God, guide him in wisdom's way. Give peaceful triumph to the light. Bid error melt away. Written in Lynn, Massachusetts, November 8, 1866. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Signs of the Heart by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Fatty Come to me, joys of heaven, Breathe through the summer air, A balm, the long-lost leaven, Dissolving death, despair. O little heart, to me thou art, A sign that never can depart. Come to me, peace on earth, from out life's billowy sea, A wave of welcome birth, The life that lives in thee. O love divine, this heart of thine Is all I need to comfort mine. Come when the shadows fall, And night grows deeply dark, The barren brood, O call, With song of morning lark, 
and from above dear heart of love send us thy white winged dove pleasant view concord new hampshire 1899 end of poem this recording is in the public domain flowers by mary baker eddy read for librivox by clatu at mixed signals dot ml slash cnc mirrors of morn whence the dewdrop is born soft tints of the rainbow and skies sisters of song what a shadowy throng around you in memory rise far do ye flee from your green bowers free fair floral apostles of love sweetly to shed fragrance fresh round the dead and breath of the living above flowers for the brave be he monarch or slave whose heart bore its grief and is still flowers for the kind i the christians who wind wreaths for the triumphs or ill written in pleasant view concord new hampshire may twenty one nineteen o four end of poem this recording is in the public domain. To the Old Year, 1865. Read for LibriVox.org by April 6090, California, United States of America. To the Old Year, 1865. Pass on, returnless year. The track behind thee is with glory crowned. The turf where thou hast trod is holy ground. Pass proudly to thy bier. Chill was thy midnight day, while justice grasped the sword to hold her throne, and on her altar our loved Lincoln's own. Great willing heart did lay. Thy purpose hath been won. Thou pointest thy phantom finger, grim and cold, to the dark record of our guilt unrolled, and smiling sayest, "'Tis done." This record I will bear to the dim chambers of eternity. The chain and charter I have lived to see, purged by the canon's prayer. Convulsion, carnage, war, the pomp and tinsel of unrighteous power, bloated oppression in its awful hour. I, dying, dare abhor one word receding year. Ere thou grow tremulous with shadowy night, say, will the young year dawn with wisdom's light to brighten o'er thy bier? or we the past forget and heal her wounds too tenderly to last or let to-day grow difficult and vast with traitors unvoiced yet though thou must leave the tear hearts bleeding ere they break in silence yet wrong jubilant and right with bright eye wet thou fast expiring year thy work is done and well thou hast borne burdens and may take thy rest pillow thy head on time's untired breast illustrious year farewell lynn massachusetts january first eighteen sixty six end of poem this recording is in the public domain invocation for eighteen sixty eight by mary baker eddy read for librivox dot org by phone father of every age of every rolling sphere help us to write a deathless page of truth this dawning year help us to humbly bow to thy all-wise behest whate'er the gift of joy or woe knowing thou knowest best aid our poor soul to sing above the tempest's glee give us the eagle's fearless wing the doves to soar to thee all merciful and good hover the homeless heart give us this day our daily food in knowing what thou art swampscott massachusetts january first eighteen sixty eight end of poem this recording is in the public domain christmas morn by mary baker eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley. Blessed Christmas morn, though murky clouds pursue thy way, 
thy light was born where storms in shrouds nor dawn nor day dear christ for ever here and near no cradle song no natal hour and mother's tear to thee belong thou god i dear life in crown the bethlehem bay beloved replete by flesh embound was but thy shade thou gentle beam of living love and deathless life truth infinite so far above all mortal strife or cruel creed or earth-born taint fill us to-day with all thou art be thou our saint our stay alway end of poem this recording is in the public domain Easter Morn by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Gently thou beckonest from the giant hills The newborn beauty in the emerald sky And awakening murmurs from the drowsy rills O gladsome dayspring rift of mortal sigh to glorify all time eternity with thy still fathomless christ majesty e'en as thou gildest gladden joy dear god give risen power to prayer fan thou the flame of right with might and midst the rod and stern dark shadows cast on thy blessed name lift thou a patient love above earth's ire piercing the clouds with its triumphal spire while sacred song and loudest breath of praise echo amid the hymning spheres of light with heaven's leers and angels loving lays sent to the loyal struggler for the right joy not a time nor yet by nature sown, but the celestial seed dropped from love's throne. Prolong the strain, Christ risen, sad sense annoy. No more the peace of soul's sweet solitude, deep loneliness, tear filled tones of distant joy. Depart, glad Easter glows with gratitude, love's virtue veils the leaflet's wondrous birth rich rays rare footprints on the dust of earth not life the vassal of the changeful hour nor burden bliss but truth and love attest the solemn splendor of immortal power the ever christ and glorified behest poured on the sense which deems no suffering vain that wipes away the sting of death sin pain end of poem this recording is in the public domain resolutions for the day by mary baker eddy read for librivox by clatu at mixed signals dot ml slash c and c to rise in the morning and drink in the view, the home where I dwell in the vale, the blossoms whose fragrance and charms ever new are scattered o'er hillside and dale. To gaze on the sunbeams enkindling the sky, a loftier life to invite, a light that illumines my spiritual eye and inspires my pen as I write, to form resolutions with strength from on high, such physical laws to obey as reason with appetite pleasures deny that health may my efforts repay to kneel at the altar of mercy and pray that pardon and grace through his son may comfort my soul all the wearisome day and cheer me with hope when tis done to daily remember my blessings and charge 
and make this my humble request. Increase thou my faith and my vision enlarge, and bless me with Christ's promised rest. To hourly seek for deliverance strong, from selfishness, sinfulness, and dearth, from vanity, folly, and all that is wrong, with ambition that binds us to earth. To kindly pass over a wound or a foe, and memory but part us a while, to breathe forth a prayer that his love I may know, whose mercies my sorrows beguile. If these resolutions are acted up to, and faith spreads her pinions abroad, twill be sweet when I ponder the days may be few that waft me away to my God. Written in Girlhood End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Oh, for thy wing, sweet bird, by Mary Baker Eddy, read for LibriVox.org by Maria de Fatima da Silva. Oh, for thy wing, sweet bird, and soul of melody by being blessed, like thee my voice had stirred some dear remembrance in a weary breast. But whither wouldst thou rove, bird of the airy wing, unfold thy plumes? In what dark leafy grove wouldst chant thy vespers mid rich glooms? Or sing thy love-lorn note in deeper solitude, where nymph or saint has wooed some mystic spot, divinely desolate, the shrine to paint? Yet wherefore ask thy doom? Blessed compared with me thou art, unto thy greenwood home, bearing no bitter memory at heart. Wearing no earthly chain, thou canst in azure bright soar far above, nor pinnest thou in vain o'er joys departed and forgotten love. O oh, take me to thy bower, beguile the lagging hours of weariness with strain which hath strange power to make me love thee as i love life less from mortal consciousness which binds to earth infirmity of woe or pining tenderness whose streams will never dry or cease to flow an aching voiceless void hushed in the heart whereunto none reply and in the cringing crowd companionless bird bear me through the sky end of poem this recording is in the public domain come thou by mary baker eddy read for librivox by clatu at mixed signals dot ml slash cnc come in the minstrel's lay when two hearts meet and two hearts greet and all is morn and may come thou and now anew to thought and deed give sober speed thy will to know and do stay till the storms are o'er the cold blasts done the rain of heaven begun and love the evermore be patient waiting heart light love divine is here and thine you therefore cannot part the seasons come and go love like the sea rolls on with thee but knows no ebb and flow faith hope and tears triune above the sod find peace in god and one eternal noon o oh, thou hast heard my prayer and i am blessed this is thy high behest thou here and everywhere end of poem this recording is in the public domain Wish and Item by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish To the Editor of the Item, Lynn, Massachusetts I hope the heart that's hungry for things above the floor Will find within its portals an item rich in store That melancholy mortals will count their mercies o'er and learn that truth and wisdom have many items more that when a wrong is done us it stirs no thought of strife 
and love becomes the substance as item of our life that every ragged urchin with bare feet soiled or sore share god's most tender mercies find items at our door then if we've done to others some good ne'er told before when angels shall repeat it twill be an item more end of poem this recording is in the public domain dedication of a temperance hall by mary baker eddy read for librivox by clatu at mixed signals dot ml slash cnc author of all divine gifts lofty pure and free temperance and truth in song sublime an offering bring to thee a temple whose high dome rose from a water cup and from its altar to thy throne may we press on and up and she last at the cross first at the tomb who waits woman will watch to cleanse from dross the cause she elevates sons of the old bay state work for our glorious cause and be your waiting hearts elate since temperance makes your laws temples of honor all social or grand or great this blazoned brilliant temperance hall to thee we dedicate good templars one and all good sons and daughters too we dedicate this temperance hall to god to truth and you written in lynn massachusetts august 4 1866 end of poem this recording is in the public domain lines by mary baker eddy read for LibriVox .org by alan lawley come rest in this bosom my own stricken dear more was that fold for the lambkin soft virtues repose where the weary and earth-stricken lay down their woes when the fountain and leaflet are frozen and sear and the mountains more friendless their home is not here when the herd had forsaken and left them to stray from the green sunny slopes of the woodland away where the music of waters had fled to the sea and this life but one given to suffer and be was it then thou didst call them to banish all pain and the harp-string just breaking re-echo again to a strain of enchantment that flowed as the wave where they waited to welcome the murmur it gave oh there's never a shadow where sunshine is not and never the sunshine without a dark spot yet there's one will be victor for glory and fame without heart to define them were only a name. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To the Sunday School Children by Mary Baker Eddy. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley. Who sent me the picture? Depictive of Isaiah 11 Jesus loves you, so does mother, glad thy Easter tide, loving God and one another, you in him abide. Ours through him who gave us to you, gentle as the dove, fondling e'en the lion furious, leading kin with love. Father, in thy great heart hold them, ever thus as thine. Shield and guide and guard them, and when at some siren shrine, they would lay their pure heart's offering, light with wisdom's ray. Beacon beams athwart the weakly, rough or treacherous way. Temper every trembling footfall, till they gain at last, Safe in science, 
bright with glory, just the way thou hast. Then, O oh, tender love and wisdom, crown the lives thus blessed with the guerdon of thy bosom, whereon they may rest. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hope by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org By Alan Lawley Tis born on the zephyr at eventide's hour It falls on the heart like the dew on the flower An infinite essence from tropic to pole The promise, the home, and the heaven of soul Hope happy fies life at the altar or bower, And loosens the fetters of pride and of power. It comes through our tears as the soft summer rain, To beautify, bless, and make joyful again. The harp of the minstrel, the treasure of time, A rainbow of rapture, o'er arching, divine, the God-given mandate that speaks from above. No place for earth's idols, but hope thou and love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Etta by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox by Clatu at mixedsignals.ml slash cnc. Fair girl, thy rosebud heart rests warm within life's summer bowers. Nor blasts of winter's angry storm, nor April's changeful showers, its leaves have shed or bowed the stem, but gracefully it stands, a gem in beauty's diadem, unplucked by ruthless hands. Thus may it ripen into bloom, fresh as the fragrant sod and yield its beauty and perfume an offering pure to god sweet as the poetry of heaven bright as her evening star be all thy life in music given while beauty fills each bar written in lynn massachusetts december 8 1866 end of poem this recording is in the public domain Nevermore by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox by Clatu At mixedsignals.ml slash cnc Are the dear days ever coming again, As sweetly they came of yore, Singing the olden and dainty refrain, O oh, ever and nevermore, Ever to gladness and never to tears, Ever the gross world above, Never to toiling, and never to fears, ever to truth, and to love. Can the forever of happiness be outside this ever of pain? Will the hereafter from suffering free the weary of body and brain? Weary of sobbing like some tired child over the tears it has shed, weary of sowing the wayside and wild, watching the husbandman fled, never more reaping the harvest we deem evermore gathering in woe say are the sheaves and the gladness a dream or to the patient who sow written in lynn massachusetts september 3 1871 end of poem this recording is in the public domain meeting of my departed mother and husband by mary baker eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Joy for thee, happy friend, thy bark is past, The dangerous sea and safely moored at last, Beyond rough foam, soft gales celestial In sweet music bore, spirit emancipate For this far shore, thee to thy home. You've travelled long, and far from mortal joys to souls diviner sense that spurn such toys 
brave wrestler lone now see thy ever self life never fled man is not mortal never of the dead the dark unknown when hope soared high and joy was eagle plumed thy pinions drooped the flesh was weak and doomed to pass away but faith triumphant round thy death couch shed majestic forms and radiant glory sped the dawning day intensely grand and glorious life's sphere beyond the shadow infinite appear life love divine where mortal yearnings come not sighs are stilled and home and peace and hearts are found and filled thine ever thine bearest thou no tidings from our loved on earth the toiler tireless for truth's new birth all unbeguiled our joy is gathered from her parting sigh this hour looks on her heart with pitying eye what of my child when severed by death's dream i woke to life she deemed i died and could not know the strife at first to fail that waking with a love that steady turns to god a hope that ever upward yearns bowed to his will years had passed o'er thy broken household band when angels beckoned me to this bright land with thee to meet she that has wept o'er thee kissed my cold brow raised the sad marble to our memory now in lone retreat by the remembrance of her loyal life and parting prayer i only know my wife thy child shall come where farewells cloud not o'er our ransomed rest hither to reap with all the crowned and blessed of bliss the sum when love's rapt sense the heart-strings gently sweep with joy divinely fair the high and deep to call her home she shall mount upward unto purer skies we shall be waiting in what glad surprise our spirit's own end of poem this recording is in the public domain I Love White by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley I love beauty, thou art singing To my sense a sweet refrain To my business memory bringing Scenes that I would see again Chief the charm of thy reflecting Is the moral that it brings Nature with the mind connecting gives the artist's fancy wings soul sublime mid human debris paints the limner's work i ween art and science all unweary lighting up this mortal dream work ill done within the misty mine of human thoughts we see soon abandoned when the master crowns life's cliff for such as we Students wise he maketh now thus those who fish in waters deep when the buried master hails us from the shores afar complete art hath paid this isthmus lordling in a beauty strong and meek as the rock whose upward tending points the plane of power to seek isle of beauty thou art teaching lessons long and grand to-night to my heart that would be bleaching to thy whiteness cliff of white end of poem this recording is in the public domain spring by mary baker eddy read for 
by Alan Lawley. Come to thy bowers, sweet spring, and paint the grey, stark trees, the bud, the leaf and wing, bring with thee brush and breeze, and soft thy shading lay on vale and woodland deep, with sunshine's lovely ray light o'er the rugged steep more softly warm and weave the patient timid grass till heard at silvery eve poor robin's lonely mass bid faithful swallows come and build their cosy nests where wind nor storm can numb their downy little breasts come at the sad heart's call to empty summer bowers where still and dead are all the vernal songs and flowers it may be months or years since joyous spring was there o oh, come to clouds and tears with light and song and prayer end of poem this recording is in the public domain June by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Whence are thy wooings, gentle June? Thou hast a nigh charm. Thy breezes scent the rose's breath. O time gives thee her palm. The lark's shrill song doth wake the dawn. The ebert's forest flute gives back some maiden melody too pure for aught so mute the fairy peopled world of flowers enraptured by thy spell looks love unto the laughing hours through woodland grove and dell and soft thy footstep falls upon the verdant grass it weaves to melting murmurs ye have stirred the timid trembling leaves when sunshine beautifies the shower as smiles through teardrops seen ask of its june the long hushed heart what hath the record been and thou wilt find that harmonies in which the soul hath part near perish young like things of earth in records of the heart End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rondelet by Mary Baker Eddy. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley. The flowers of June, the gates of memory unbar. The flowers of June such old-time harmonies we tune i fain would keep the gates ajar so full of sweet enchantment are the flowers of june james t white who loves not june is out of tune with love and god the rose his rival reigns the stars reject his pains his home the clod and yet i trow when sweet rondo doth play a part the curtain drops on june veiled is the modest moon hushed is the heart end of poem this recording is in the public domain Autumn by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Quickly earth's jewels disappear The turf whereon I tread Ere autumn blanche another year May rest above my head Touched by the finger of decay Is every earthly love For joy to shun my weary way is registered above 
the languid brooklets yield their sighs a requiem o'er the tomb of sunny days and cloudless skies enhancing autumn's gloom the wild winds mutter howl and moan to scare my woodland walk and frightened fancy flees to roam where ghosts and goblins stalk the cricket's sharp discordant scream fills mortal sense with dread more sorrowful it scarce could seem its voices beauty fled yet here upon this faded sod o oh, happy hours and fleet when songsters matin hymns to god are poured in strains so sweet my heart unbidden joins rehearse i hope it's better made when mingling with the universe beneath the maple shade end of poem this recording is in the public domain alphabet and bayonet by mary baker eddy read for librivox dot org by alan lawley if fancy plumes aerial flight go fix thy restless mind on learning's law and wisdom's might and live to bless mankind the sword is sheathed tis freedom's hour no despot bears misrule where knowledge plants the foot of power in our god-blessed free school forth from this fount the streamlets flow that widen in their course hero and sage arise to show science the mighty source and loud the land whose talents rock the cradle of her power and wraths are twinned round plymouth rock from erudition's bower farther than feet of chamois fall free as the generous air strange nobler far than clarion call wait freedom's welcome where minerva's silver sandals still are loosed and knotty feet where echoes still my day-dreams thrill woke by her fancied feet end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Country Seat by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Wild spirit of song missed the zephyrs at play In bowers of beauty I bend to thy lay And woo while I worship in deep sylvan spot The muses soft echoes to kindle the grot wake chords of my lyre with musical kiss to vibrate and tremble with accents of bliss here morning peers out from her crimson repose on proud prairie queen and the modest moss rose and vesper reclines when the dewdrop is shed on the heart of the pink in its odorous bed but flora has stolen the rainbow and the sky to sprinkle the flowers with exquisite dye here famed honoured hickory rears his bold form and bears a brave breast to the lightning and storm while palm bay and laurel in classical glee chase tulip magnolia and fragrant fringed tree and sturdy horse chestnut for centuries hath given its feathery blossom and branches to heaven here is life here is youth here is the poet's world wish cool waters at play with the gold gleaming fish while cactus a mellower glory receives from light colored softly by blossom and leaves and nestling alder is whispering low in lap of the pear tree 
with musical flow. Dark sentinel hedgerow is guarding repose mid grotto and songlet and streamlet that flows, where beauty and perfume from buds burst away and ope their closed cells to the bright laughing day. Yet dwellers in Eden, earth yield you her tear, oft plucked for the banquet, but laid on the bier. Earth's beauty and glory, delude as the shrine, or font of real joy and of visions divine. But hope as the eaglet that spurneth the thought, may soar above matter to fasten on God and freely adore all his spirit hath made, where rapture and radiance and glory ne'er fade. O oh, give me the spot where affection may dwell, in sacred communion with home's magic spell, where flowers of feeling are fragrant and fair, and those we most love find a happiness rare. But clouds are a presage, they darken my lay. This life is a shadow, and hastens away. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Ellen, Sing Me That Song by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Klaatu Sing me that song, my spirit is sad, life's pulses move fitful and slow, a meeting with loved ones in dreams I have had, whose robes were as spotless as snow, a phantom of joy, it fled with a light, and left but a parting in air, my soul is enchained to life's dreary night, O oh, sing me sweet hour of prayer. Ah, sleep, twin sister, of death and of night. My thoughts neath thy drapery still lie. Alas, that from dreams so boundless and bright We waken to life's dreary sigh. Those moments most sweet are fleetest alway, For love claspeth earth's raptures not long, Till darkness and death like mist melt away To rise to a seraph's new song. O'er ocean or alps, the stranger who roams But gathers a wreath for his beer, For life hath its music in low minor tones, and man is the cause of its tear. But drops of pure nectar our brimming cup fill, when we walk by that murmuring stream, or when like the thrill of that mountain rill your songs float in memory's dream. Sweet spirit of love, at soft eventide, wake gently the chords of her lyre, and whisper of one who sat by her side to join with the neighboring choir, and tell how that heart is silent and sad, No melody sweeps o'er its strings. Tis breaking alone, but a young heart and glad Might cheer it perchance when she sings. End of To Ellen Sing Me That Song This recording is in the public domain. Lines on Visiting Pine Grove Cemetery Read for LibriVox by Klaatu at mixedsignals.ml slash cnc Ah, why should the brief bliss of life's little day Grow cold in this spot, as the spiritless clay, And thought be at work with the long-buried hours, And tears be bedewing these fresh smiling flowers? Ah, wherefore the memory of dear ones deemed dead Should bow thee as winds bow the tall willow's head? Beside you they walk, while you weep, And but pass from your sight as the shade o'er the dark wavy grass. The cypress may mourn with her evergreen tears, And, like the blue hyacinth, change not with years. Yea, flowers of feeling may blossom above To yield earth the fragrance of goodness and love. So one heart is left me, she breathes in my ear. I'm living to bless thee, for this are we here. And when this sweet pledge to my lone heart was given, Earth held but this joy or this happiness heaven. Here the rock and the sea and the tall waving pine, 
enchant deep the senses, subduing sublime. Yet stronger than these is the spell that hath power to sweep o'er the heart-strings in memory's hour. Of the past tis the talisman, with we three met, when the star of our friendship arose not to set, and pure as its rising, and bright as the star, but its course through our heavens, whether near or afar. Written in Lynn, Massachusetts, August 24, 1865. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Verse by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Mother's New Year Gift to the Little Children Father, Mother God, loving me, guard me when I sleep, guide my little feet up to thee. To the Big Children Father, Mother Good, loving thee I seek, patient, meek, in the way thou hast, be it slow or fast, up to thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Truth by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley. Beyond the clouds away, in the dim distant lay, a bright and golden shower, at sunset's radiant hour, like to the soul's glad immortality, making this life divine, making its waters wine, giving the glory that I cannot see. In God there is no night, Truth is eternal light, a help for ever near, for sinless sense is here. In truth, the life, the principle of man, away then mortal sense, then error get thee hence, thy discord near in harmony began. The immortal truth since heaven rang, the while the glad stars sang to hail creation's glorious morn as when this babe was born a painless heraldry of soul not sense shine on our wildered way give god's ideal sway and sickness sin and death are banished hence end of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Liberty Bells by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley This is the hour they then foretold When earth, inebriate with crime, Laughed right to scorn, and guilt grown bold, Knelt worshipping, at mammoth's shrine. This is the hour corruption's band is driven back and periled right, rescued by the fanatic hand, spans our broad heaven of light. Righteousness near, or struck or dumb, feared for an hour the tyrant's heel, in justice to the combat sprang, God to the rescue, liberty peal. Joy is in every belfry bell, joy for the captives sounded long. Ye who have wept for score can tell the holy meaning of their song. Tis freedom's birthday, blood bought boom, O war rent flag, O soldier shroud, thine be the glory, nor too soon is heard your cry aloud. Oh, not too soon is rent the chain, and charter, trampling right in dust, till God is God no longer, near again, quenched liberty that's just. End of poem. This recording 
is in the public domain. Memento by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox by Clatu at mixedsignals.ml slash cnc Respectfully inscribed to my friends in Lynn I come to thee o'er the moonlit sea When the hoarse wave revisits thy shore When waters shout and the stars peep out I am with thee in spirit once more Then list the moan of the billow's foam, laving with surges thy silvery beach. Night's dewy eye, the sea mew's lone cry, witness my presence and utter my speech. Pleasant a grave by the rock or wave, and afar from life's turmoil its goal. No sculptured lie or hypocrite sigh, ere to mock the bright truth of the soul. Friends will not ye think kindly of me, in those moments to memory bestowed smile on me yet o oh blue eyes and jet soft as when parting thy sympathy glowed march three eighteen sixty seven end of poem this recording is in the public domain communion hymn by mary baker eddy read for librivox.org by Maria de Fatima da Silva. Saw ye my Saviour, heard ye the glad sound, felt ye the power of the word, t'was a truth that made us free, and was found by you and me in the life and the love of our Lord. Morn it calls you, come to my bosom, love wipes your tears all away, and will lift the shade of gloom, and for you make radiant room midst the glories of one endless day sinner it calls you come to this fountain cleanse the foul senses within tis the spirit that makes pure that exalts thee and will cure all thy sorrow and sickness and sin strongest deliverer friend of the friendless life of all being divine thou the christ and not the creed thou the truth in thought and deed Thou the water, the bread, and the wine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lost Dio by Mary Baker Eddy. Read for LibriVox.org by April 6090, California, United States of America. Lost Dio. The laying of the cornerstone of the Mother Church. Laus Dio, it is done. Rolled away from loving heart is a stone. Lifted higher we depart, having won. Laus Dio, on this rock, heaven chiselled squarely good, stands his church. God is love and understood by his flock. Laus Dio, night starlit, slumbers not in God's embrace. Be awake, like this stone, be in thy place. Stand, not sit. Grave, silent, steadfast stone, dirge and song, and shoutings low, in thy heart dwell serene, and sorrow? No, it has none. Laus Dio. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Our National Thanksgiving Hymn by Mary Baker Eddy Read for LibriVox.org by Maria de Fatima da Silva God of the rolling year, to thee we raise a nation's holiest hymn in grateful praise. Plenty and peace abound at thy behest, yet wherefore this thy love thou knowest best. Thou who impartial blessings spreadst abroad, thou wisdom, love, and truth, divinely God, who giveth joy and tears, conflict and rest, teaching us thus of thee who knowest best ruler supreme to thee we'll meekly bow when we have learned of truth what thou dost now why from this festive hour some dear lost guest best hence its sunlit glow thou knowest best how have our honored dead fought on in gloom peace her white wings will spread over their tomb why waited their reward, triumph, and rest, 
Till moulds the hero form thou knowest best. Shades of our heroes, the union now is won, the star whose destiny none may outrun. Tears of the bleeding slave poured on her breast, when to be wiped away thou knowest best. Thou who in the Christ hallowed its grief, O meekest of mourners, while yet the chief, give to the pleading hearts comfort and rest in that benediction which knoweth best. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Satisfied by Mary Baker Eddy. Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. It matters not what be thy lot, so love doth guide. For storm or shine, pure peace is thine, whate'er betide. And of these stones, O tyrants' thrones, God able is to raise up seed, In thought and deed, to faithful his. I, darkling sense, arise, go hence, Our God is good. False fears are foes, Truth tatters those when understood. Love looseth thee and lifteth me, Aeont hates thrall. There life is light, and wisdom might, And God is all. The centuries break, the earth-bound wake, God's glorified. Who doth his will, his likeness still is satisfied. Pleasant View, Concord, New Hampshire, January 1900 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of poems by Mary Baker Eddy.